Okay, so this is our final lesson, lesson seven in our force and motion unit. Um, so we're going to finish out this unit by talking about Newton's laws of motion. So remember, this is the force and motion unit. So he started out talking about motion, what it means for an object to be in motion. Then we learned about speed and velocity and acceleration. We learned that you can graph motion and we can look at a graph and interpret what's going on with the with regards to the motion of an object. Um, and then we jumped into forces and we learned about some specific types of forces and how forces impact motion. So just a quick review on forces. Remember, things don't move without a force being applied. And we're going to look at that in one of Newton's laws today. Um, but net force, net force is the combination of all the forces that are acting on an object. And so if I were to ask you to find the net force of these objects, um, you should be able to do that. So pause the video now. Um, just kind of take a look at this and see what you come up with. All right, so hopefully you said that um, the net force here in this first example is one Newton. So we have what's called opposing forces pushing on the blue box. Um, since three Newtons is greater than two Newtons, the object is going to move to the right. So we have directionality here that we can describe. And three Newtons minus two Newtons gives us a net force of one Newton. Now that's a little bit different in the second example because in the second example, these are not opposing forces. These forces are actually working together. So remember to find net force of forces that are working together, you would add the two forces. Um, so three Newtons plus two Newtons would give us a total or net force of five Newtons. And then the direction of the box would be to the right. Sometimes we have forces that cancel. So you can see in this example, these are opposing forces, which means to find net force, we have to subtract. So three minus three would give us zero. And when net force is zero, we call this a balance force. And then there's not gonna be any motion. All right, so we're jumping into, we mentioned Sir Isaac Newton in the last lesson, um, but you need to know that every motion that we observe, um, whether it's motion or not motion, um, is related to some sort of force, either balanced forces or unbalanced forces. And we're gonna need to bridge those ideas. Sir Isaac Newton was the first person to sort of describe this relationship between force and motion, and he did it in three laws. Um, so we call these, these laws Newton's laws of motion. We're going to go through them, and it's not so much important that you memorize the actual words of the law, but you do need to be able to apply the words to real life situations. So Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia, and it states that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion unless an unbalanced force causes a change in that. So if I have a ball that's resting on the ground, basically what Newton said is that ball's not gonna move. No chance it's gonna move unless a force acts on it, specifically an unbalanced force. The same is true for an object that's already in motion. So if you have a car that's moving, Newton said that car's gonna keep moving unless a force is acted on it that causes it to stop or slow down. So this is, remember, also called the law of inertia. And so we need to learn that inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. And if, um, if you're in my class, uh, remember the other day we did this inquiry lab where you had to sort of discover inertia. So we had the Barbie car and we um, let the Barbie move down the ramp and hit objects. And we saw that the Barbie sort of flew out of the car and we learned what inertia looks like. So it's the tendency of an object to want to keep doing what it, whatever it, it was that it was doing. Um, a great example of inertia is when somebody pulls the tablecloth out from under like a set table and everything on the table just sort of stays and the tablecloth comes out. Um, if you do it just right, those plates and dishes on the table will resist the change in motion because of inertia. 
However, if you do it wrong and the tablecloth applies an unbalanced force on the dishes, then you have a mess. But um, another example, I love this animation. So we have the car, it's moving. We have the person, he's moving in the car. Both are in motion at this point. However, there is an obstacle that stops the car. So Newton's law says an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So the outside force in this example for the car is that brick wall. Okay, so the brick wall applies an opposing force to the car that stops its motion. However, the guy in the car doesn't know that. So the law of inertia says that his body is going to want to keep doing whatever it was that it was doing, and it was moving forward. So the car stopped, but the guy continues to move forward because of those inertial forces. Um, this is why seatbelts are important. Airbags are important. They sort of um, work against inertia. Newton's second law describes the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. And this is a super important relationship that you need to be able to know. So not only do you need to be able to describe what might happen to acceleration if I increase the mass of an object, or what sort of force is needed if I need an object to accelerate very quickly. So you need to be able to describe the relationship between these three factors, but you also need to be able to solve for it quantitatively. And so we have a force, um, excuse me, we have a word problem um, and a formula that is applicable to Newton's second law. So the unbalanced force acting on an object is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. This is the whole idea behind Newton's second law. So our formula is force equals mass times acceleration. So F equals M times A. Um, we can solve for force, we can solve for mass, we can solve for acceleration, and you'll need to be able to do all three of those. Now, when we're working out these force word problems, the unit that we're gonna use in the end um, is kilograms times meters per second squared, which translates into a Newton. So we're gonna use a capital N to represent um, the force, which is measured in Newtons. All right, so let's put this to uh, a real life application. So basically we have a baseball here and the idea is the more force you put behind an object, the more acceleration the object is gonna have. Um, so if I throw a ball really hard, and specifically I mean with a force of 10 Newtons, uh, then the ball's going to go faster. So I've got a number here, acceleration 20 meters per second squared. If I throw the ball, if I put a smaller force behind the ball, so if I now have a force of one Newton, then the ball is going to move more slowly or it's not going to accelerate as fast. And so we can see that numerically. So the greater the force behind an object, the faster it will accelerate and vice versa is true. All right, so let's put this into uh, word problems. So I have three practice problems here, and I want you to go through and I want you to work those out. Um, in number one, you're looking for the force necessary for a 160 kilogram automobile to accelerate at a rate of two meters per second squared. So you're gonna plug this into your pie chart or your formula, force equals mass times acceleration. So you'll just multiply those to get your answer. Um, now, in number two, I want you to notice this time you're looking for the baseball's mass. So you might have to use the pie chart formula that we talked about in class um, to calculate the mass. And then in number three, you're looking for the sailboat's acceleration. So you're going to have to solve for acceleration um, using your pie chart formula. So pause the video and work those out really quick. All right, take a look at your answers. Make sure your answers match mine. Um, and if they do, you're good to go. Make sure that you remember we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. So that's two numbers after the decimal. And every value needs a unit. So make sure that you're unit using the correct unit. So in these word problems, our mass unit is going to be kilograms, not grams. 
Um, so we have to make sure that we use that. And then newtons, of course, is going to be the unit for force. And then always the unit for acceleration is meters per second squared. All right, and Newton's third law, um, his third law states for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And basically, it's talking about forces. So if you've ever seen a Newton's cradle, um, this is, I got a Newton's cradle when I was in high school, and I could just watch it for hours. Um, so basically, with a Newton's cradle, no matter how many of the balls are hanging on a string, when you pull one back and let it go, one comes out on the other side. If you pull two back and let it go, two come out on the other side. If you pull back three and let them go, three come out on the other side. And so this is a great example of for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Basically, um, in layman's terms, Newton's law just means that forces come in pairs. So if you think about if you kick a ball, um, the ball moves forward. There's a force applied to the ball, but the ball also applies a force to your foot. Um, so you might feel it throbbing a little bit. You know you've kicked the ball. Same thing if you punch a wall, um, which I don't recommend, but if you do punch a wall, the wall gets the force, but your hand also gets the force. So they're equal and opposite reaction forces. Um, this is why a gun kicks back. So when the bullet moves through the barrel and is propelled forward, the, the um, opposite force or the opposing force is the kick of the gun. Here's some other examples of Newton's third law. So um, swimming, if you are swimming, if you want to move forward, you have to push the water back. So there, those are opposing forces. Standing up, you push down on the ground and your body moves up. Same thing when a rocket launches, gases have to be propelled or pushed um, down in order for the rocket to move upward. So you can see that here in this example. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. All right, so if I were to ask you which of Newton's laws best explain why this test tube keeps moving after the skateboard stops, hopefully you would tell me this is because of Newton's first law. For every action, Excuse me, that's a Newton's third law. Um, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. So we see the skateboard stops um, and the test tube keeps moving. So that's a great example of inertia. Um, one of the things about examples for Newton's laws is actually you can make all three of Newton's laws of motion apply to any example. So when I give you examples, I'm going to be specific in what I want you to look for. All right, here we have the Newton's cradle again. So you can see three... Um, Balls are pulled back and then three or four come out on the other side. I can't really tell. But um, this is an example of equal opposite reaction, which is Newton's third law. All right, so a person kicking a soccer ball and the ball applies an equal and opposite force to the person's foot. So in that particular example, this would be an example of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. And this is another example of why this could be all of Newton's laws, right? So if we're trying to make this animation apply to Newton's first law, you could say, well, the soccer ball is steel, and the soccer ball doesn't move unless his foot applies a force to it. So that would be an example of how Newton's first law applies to this situation. Um, if we're trying to apply Newton's second law, you might say, well, his foot has to, or the test tube's foot, has to apply a force to get the ball to accelerate. And you could measure that with Newton's second law. All right, so in this example, we're trying to figure out what the force is needed um, to push this car, make this car accelerate 0 0.05 meters per second squared. So we have a formula for that, force equals mass times acceleration. So I can multiply these two values to determine that, and that would be an example of Newton's second law. 
All right, so we see here this is an example of that action-reaction force, and so we know that's Newton's third law. All right, so that's the end of all of our lessons in the force and motion unit. You do have a practice activity that you need to complete with regards to Newton's law, so make sure you get that done. Um, and I'm excited to get started on our review next.